Good morning. My name is David. Welcome to week nine of 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. Feel free to hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, that helps uh, the YouTube algorithms reach out to more people. And if you'd like to read about the first 52 churches in 52 weeks, that's on Amazon. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Uh, today we are in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, we are going to be checking out my first ever Mormon church, uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints. Uh, when it comes to the Mormon faith, I know next to nothing about it. Uh, I'm a complete newbie when it comes to this. So my understanding is there's the majority of Mormons are in Utah. There's a Brigham Young University, um, Mitt Romney, um, and then um, there's a Book of Mormon. So on my drive over here, I try to do a real quick hour crash course to understand what the Mormon faith is all about. It's different to me uh, for someone that is just learning about this on the spot basically today with Joseph Smith and gold plates and creating a, a bot like so you have the Bible Mormons believe the Bible and then there's a book of Mormon um, which comes after that so like I don't even know what a latter-day saint is but I'm guessing it's something to do with Joseph Smith and everyone else that derived from whatever happened with um, an angel called is it Moroni Moroni not macaroni, I know that. I could really go for some macaroni right now. Anyway, that's probably not funny. Anyway, I'm gonna go inside. Uh, my understanding uh, in my crash course is dress your Sunday's best. There, there are two or three hours for the service split up hourly. So the first should be like a sacrament meeting. Second should be some type of class. And then a third hour possibly is like a priesthood hour i don't know i'm gonna find out so stay tuned So, not only did I get one Book of Mormon, I actually got two Books of Mormon. A lot of good first impressions, uh, especially when it comes to the people that, that I met. Um, at the same time, I'm on information overload. Um, I'm still in the church parking lot. I've been here for four hours. So, uh, a lot of that is by choice. A lot of that is due to um, ignorance. So, let me explain. Uh, I had the understanding looking at information that a church starts, all Mormon churches start at 9 a.m. As I learned, that is not the case anymore. So uh, when you look and you Google a Mormon church, you try and find the website because typically you can find church times. Well, Google doesn't have any type of church times. When you click on the website, it takes you straight to the all-encompassing Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there's no individual websites. So for me, it was very difficult to locate what service times were. I didn't find it out until after the fact I was here. So I basically waited an hour in the parking lot. When the church finally opened its doors around 9.30, 10 o'clock, um, I got inside and it's, I never had seen portraits and imagery used like I've seen this before. So yeah, you would have images of Jesus Christ, you'd have images of uh, God the Father, but a lot of them had God the Father, God the Son, and Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith is the founder of the Mormon Church. 
1800s, he was trying to find what was the one true church when he had when he was 14 years old. And um, I'll get more into that later. But um, again, with the images, I've never seen anything like that before. I think the biggest thing when it came to the church that I really enjoyed was there were people that did come up to me. Uh, so one service member, her name was June. Um, you know, she was, she was wearing an N95 mask, but she still had no problem coming up to me without a mask and welcoming me to their church. Uh, she invited me to sit um, with her and her husband, and I politely declined, mainly because I wanted to get a little bit of footage and not look like a complete outsider you know, with my phone recording hymns and stuff. Um, later then, uh, another gentleman came up to me. His name was Kevin. And uh, Kevin was uh, very personable, uh, kind of asked a little bit about me. And, you know, I had a couple questions for him about the Mormon faith and let him know this was my first time experiencing uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So um, eventually it was time for the sacrament meeting is what it's called. So saying two hymns, and then after that um, was communion. So I'm not used to communion being so early. Here's what's different with the Mormon church. You get your bread to symbolize, a, to symbolize Christ's body, but then you also get water. Not wine, not grape juice, water. And it was very difficult for me to pray. I know this sounds silly, but anytime I receive communion, I'm praying, you know, thank you for the body and blood. Thank you for the bread and wine. But now because it's bread and water, not wine, I'm so used to wine being associated with blood. So with water, like I was having trouble making the connection where that is blood. It was so bizarre, but it completely just crisscrossed me in terms of how I typically pray after communion. I don't know how else to explain it. It was just so different to me. I asked Kevin later, it's like, why do you use the water instead? And he wasn't sure. Um, what's interesting with the Mormon church then is there's a bishop up front, but from what I learned, he doesn't actually get paid. He has a, an actual job. He's just appointed. So the sermons are really actually talks, and the talks come from congregation members. So what I learned is the bishop has a revelation in terms of who's going to speak when it comes to the talks. He'll come up to those people, and they will either accept or reject. These two members, it was a husband and a wife, the hu and they were separate when they gave their little talks or their sermons. As soon as the husband got up, to the pulpit and started talking, that's when like almost every kid decided that, hey, it's time to become restless. And I don't blame them. It was like 30 minutes in. And so many kids were crying. So many kids were trying to have fun, trying to just not be bored. So for the husband and wife who give the talks or anyone that gives the talks, um, props to you because to be not distracted with so many kids yelling all over the place. I don't know how they did it. After the sacrament meeting, that's when everyone transitioned to classes. And I kind of held back. And eventually Kevin asked if he could sit in the pew I was in. And I'm like, you know, come on in. And uh, we talked a little bit. I kind of ex expunged the information that, hey, I visit a new church each week. Uh, last week I did an Amish Mennonite type of church service. Today, I had a friend in the past who asked if, you know, why, did, why didn't I do a Mormon church when I did this before? Uh, so this time I'm like, yes, I got to do a Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints type of church. Um, I had a lot of questions and uh, Kevin took a, a lot of time to answer uh, the questions because when I first introduced myself, he kind of, he, he was very upfront. It's like, oh yeah, you know, when people come in the first time to these type of churches, we're kind of on the defense uh, because there's so many misconceptions about our church. We're always preaching about Jesus Christ, but so many people think negatively due to the Book of Mormon and all the additions and what typical Christianity will have. And I told him, yeah, <laughs> you know, 
Uh, I, I don't feel comfortable um, with books being added on, but I don't want to be rude. I want to understand because oftentimes when I actually confront different things, I take on a new perspective and I learn something new. And um, Kevin, he kind of talked to me about the whole backstory with Joseph Smith, uh, 1800s, how in New York, um, he Joseph Smith, he, he kind of, Kevin kind of told me where it's like, he's almost kind of like you, where you're trying to find the right church. You're trying to, you're trying to understand all these different churches. And with Joseph Smith, what he eventually did is he um, was praying to God, 14 years old, and all of a sudden, the story goes, God the Father and God the Son um, basically appeared to him. And um, if I'm understanding this correctly, again, information overload. Um, but he was challenged where you had to find some gold plates. And the gold plates was like from some type of ancient... I, I can't say everything off the top of my mind. All right, I'm a newbie on this. Um, but eventually, the big thing is the Church of Latter-day Saints is more geared towards the later days. And with the Book of Mormon, uh, Joseph Smith, he wasn't very educated, but he was able to translate based off these gold plates to a transcriber to write out uh, the Book of Mormon. So the Book of Mormon is essentially like a third testament it is a continuation of the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's how the story goes. Uh, during my discussion with Kevin, uh, eventually he went to go find me uh, a Book of Mormon uh, from our discussion. And that's when I had uh, two missionaries walk up to me. Um, I won't say their names, um, but uh, they're both, I want to say maybe 22, 23 years old, young kids. And uh, both dressed very well. They had the whole name tags on. And uh, they just got talking to me. And uh, after Kevin, Kevin kind of transitioned me off to them. And uh, we talked a lot uh, because I had a lot of questions. I want to understand a little bit more um, what is the Mormon church all about. And they took the time. And I think this was one of the most interesting church experiences I've had because it was so much one-on-one, -on -one, or in this case, two-on-one. -on -one do it like that. And um, had tons of questions, like, how did you get into this? Um, one of the questions I had is, because I want to kind of, in a, in a kind, Christ-like fashion, here are the arguments against the Mormon church that I understand. How do you address them? And one of the biggest ones is from Revelation, because Revelation talks about, well, you should not be adding or detracting from this word. Uh, they mentioned that with Revelation, that's more, those words are more for John's prophecy in Revelation. It has nothing to do with the rest of the Bible because more books in the Bible, more books in the New Testament were written after Revelation was written. Revelation is just at the end of the Bible when they were moving all the books around. So I'm like, oh, that's an interesting argument, um, an interesting answer to that. Um, I had so many questions, and again, I'm on information overload. I can't tell you everything, uh, but I want to understand a little bit more about the whole Joseph Smith situation. How did he get into it? One question I had is, okay, if the Bible can be a continuation where you can have a third testament, is there, is there room in this for a fourth testament of a book of later, latter, latter days? I don't know. Either way, my, my questions aside, I was talking with those two guys for about an hour and a half, and I think the thing that um, was most encouraging to me is they were genuinely excited and passionate to talk about Jesus Christ. Yeah, I had questions about the Joseph Smith stuff and gold plates and something about a seer, seeker, seer stone, something like that, um, just because it's so weird for me coming from a, a Protestant Christian background to even consider that, oh yeah, like God, he may still, he may have, he may still be using people 
with prophecies not too long ago because the way that uh, the two elders explained to me is the the idea of priesthood where God can kind of have priesthood with it was kind of like the Ark of the Covenant like God will have prophets at during one time but then if things get really bad or prophets are getting killed off God will take the priesthood away and he brought the priesthood back again when he came to Jesus Christ and the apostles and Peter and everyone else. But then as soon as the apostles started getting killed off again, the priesthood was taken away. And then with Joseph Smith, priesthood came back. So that's a very, they kept telling me about keys, like the keys of the priesthood. And again, I'm, I'm wrestling with a lot of information right now. Long story short, Mormon Church, they were trying to get me to read the Book of Mormon. I'll give it a look. Um, but I'm curious, but again, I have so many, so many things at this point in my life where it's like, you can't just break everything that you've believed your entire life and then just change in one Sunday service. So it's got me thinking. Um, and I think one of the things I took away most from this church visit is I've never met anyone or any people who were so devoted to taking so much time out of their day to speak with me about their faith. And I know they're trying to convert me to Mormonism. I understand that. Um, but I don't think many people will sit down with you for as long as they did. So to me, uh, so from me, props, uh, to this particular church for just taking time and, and listening and explaining a bunch of questions that I had, because I had a lot of questions. And as I'm doing this video, I can't think of half or nearly half of what I talked about with them. So that's going to do it for week nine, uh, 52 churches in 52 weeks. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe so you can stay up to date for future visits. As always, if you'd like to read about the first 52 churches in 52 weeks, there is a book. It's on Amazon. You can read the paperback, ebook, hardcover, or read for free if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching and hope you have a good one.